Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants is part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on fruit. We will now talk about the last important topic of this lesson that is seed. So what is a seed? As I already discussed, after fertilization happens, the ovary ripens to form the fruit and the ovule matures to form the seed. So seed is nothing but a fertilized ovule. Now seeds are formed only if fertilization happens. Now let us suppose if there is if no fertilization happens, in that case, fruit might be formed, but there will be no seeds. Again, if an ovule aborts even before fertilization, in that case also there will be no seeds because for seeds to be there, ovules have to be there. Ovules will mature only then seeds will be formed. So if you talk about a plant again, we take the same example of pomegranate plant. So in that flower, you will have the ovary. Inside the ovary, you will have the ovule. So after fertilization, the ovary will mature to form the fruit and the ovules will form the seeds. So let us take the example of this plant also in any flower, inside the flower you will have the carpel which will consist of the ovary, style and stigma. In the ovary you have the ovule. Now after fertilization happens, this is your ovary which ripens and this is the ovule which will again become mature. So this ovule will mature to form the seed. So this is how a seed will look like. So now let, let us look at the basic structure of a seed. I mean, how, what is the seed made up of? Now seeds of different plants vary in shape, size, nature of the seed coat, number of seed leaves present, quantity of the tissue present inside the seed. So there are different things. I mean, in which there are different aspects in which seeds of different plants vary. Now the main important parts of a seed are seed coat, embryo, now inside the embryo, you have radical, plimule, cotyledons. So this is how a seed structure looks like. So for, for an entire seed, so inside the seed, you have the embryo. So this is, the, this is how the embryo looks like. In embryo, you have cotyledons. These are, the, these are also known as the seed leaves. So these two are the cotyledons. You have a small plimule and you have a small radical. So radical is nothing but radical later grows to become the root system. Plimule later grows to become the shoot system. Right? And what are cotyledons? Cotyledons are the seed leaves which provide food to the embryo. So this is the embryo. Now this embryo is present inside the seed. So this is how the seed looks from outside. And this outer covering is the seed coat. So seed coat will ensure protection and inside the seed coat you have the embryo which is made up of these cotyledons, plimule and the radical. So this is the basic structure of a Now let us talk about the types of seed. Now types of seed based on presence of endosperm. Now what is endosperm now? However, we have already used these terms when we were talking about reproduction. Let us still have a quick review on what is endosperm. Now what happens after a fusion or what happens after fertilization? After fertilization, the, ov the ovary becomes the fruit, the ovule becomes the seed. Now what happens to the secondary nucleus? Because double fertilization takes place, right? So during double fertilization, Two fusion will take place. One is between the pollen grain and the egg. The other is between the pollen grain and the polar nuclei. Right? Now, the fusion between pollen grain and polar nuclei will form secondary nucleus. So, what will happen to that secondary nucleus? So, now inside the ovary, we have an ovule and one secondary nucleus as well. So, ovule will form the seed. What will happen to the secondary nucleus? That secondary nucleus will form the food laden endosperm. So endosperm is a tissue which is all made up of food, which contains all the food. So based on the presence or absence of endosperm, there are two types of seeds. Endospermic seeds, that is seeds which have endosperm. So endosperm is nothing but basically the that tissue which provides food. 
So examples of endospermic seeds would be wheat and rice. They are all endospermic seeds. Next category is non-endospermic seeds. That is seeds which lack endosperm at maturity. That means by the time the seeds are matured, the endosperm is already gone. So this endosperm is actually, how this endosperm helps? The endosperm is a food laden tissue. So the endosperm is digested and absorbed by the embryo in early developing seed. So for a developing seed, it also needs nutrients, it also needs food. So all that comes from the endosperm. In certain plants like the legumes, for example, pea and bean, what happens is the endosperm is absorbed by the embryo before the seed leaves the parent plant. So in endosperm, in any case, in any of the seeds, they contain the food and that food is actually absorbed by the embryo. Now in some plants, this absorption of the endosperm happens in a seed. But in some plants, even before the seed separates from the parent plant, because earlier the seed was nothing but the ovule and the ovule was present in the parent plant. Now even before the ovule detaches itself from the parent plant, even before that, the endosperm is digested by the embryo. So in that case, when that, when that ovule actually separates out as a seed, when you look into the seed, you don't see an endosperm because it is already digested. So you understand the difference? In endospermic seeds, even after the ovule matures, it becomes seed and detaches from the plant. Even after that, the endosperm is present there. So endosperm is digested and absorbed later by the embryo. But in, but in case of non-endospermic seeds, even before the seeds separate from the parent plant, the endosperm is already digested by the embryo. So we do not see an endosperm in a seed. So such examples are P and B. Right? Okay. Now let us look at the types of seed based on the number of cotyledons. Just now I was talking about cotyledons. Cotyledons are nothing but the seed leaves. So they are of two types, dicotyledonous seed and monocotyledonous seed. So di, dicot, di means two and mono means one. So that means a seed with two cotyledons is dicotyledonous seed, whereas a seed with one cotyledon is a monocotyledonous seed. So, thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.